All right, at this point, you should have a basic idea for the concept of the antiderivative. In this video, we're gonna introduce the notation for the antiderivative. We're also gonna give you a table that's just a list of the common derivatives you already know, but in this antiderivative form. And then we're gonna do a couple more complicated examples. First of all, we understand this Leibniz notation for the derivative, right? The important part here is we're denoting the variable with which we're taking the derivative with respect to. So for the antiderivative, we'll denote it in a, in a kind of similar way. We'll use this sign right here to denote the der antiderivative. Actually, we're going to call this the indefinite integral. And this piece right here is telling you the variable with which you're integrating with respect to. And again, I just said it, but we don't call this the antiderivative. We actually call it the indefinite integral. If you're wondering why don't we just call it the antiderivative, well, for the same reason we don't call subtraction anti-addition, right? Every operation, every process in mathematics, even if it's the inverse or the opposite of another, needs its own name. And before we move forward, it's important to note that these are important components together. This is the integral sign. This differential dx is telling you the variable with which you're taking the integral with respect to. And I already said it once, but when we find the derivative, we call that differentiation. When we're finding integrals, we call it integration. All right, let's now make a list of some properties and indefinite integrals using the rules of derivatives we already know. First up are two basic rules that we have that we had for derivatives. We have the constant multiple rule and the sum and difference rule for integrals. In this case, just like with differentiation, if we're integrating something that has a constant being multiplied out front, we can move that constant outside of the integration. And the sum and difference rule simply says we can integrate terms separately from each other. So the constant multiple rule and the sum and difference rules just help us break down to get to the nitty gritty. We now need some rules for actually integrating. The first one here is the anti-power rule. So if we're integrating x to the n, where n is this constant exponent, importantly here also is n cannot be negative one. We'll show you in one second what happens when n is negative one. But if we're differentiating, this is, this is the anti-power rule. And what we get is x to the n plus one divided by n plus one. So here we have a case of x to the negative one. In this case right here, again, we're thinking, what would we differentiate to get one over x? And if you remember, it's the natural log. In this case, it is very important now to use absolute values. And the reasoning here especially is, is because one over x, if we don't restrict the domain, negative and positive values are allowed. The only issue is at zero and natural log naturally only takes in positive values, so we need to use the absolute value to keep these domains the same. The next indefinite integral is the most obvious, e to the x. We know when we differentiate e to the x, we get e to the x. When we integrate e to the x for the same reason, we just get out e to the x. And just to do these both at the same time, the indefinite integrals of sine x and cosine of x, again, this is gonna be a little bit different when we do this because the negative that we get when we do this is in the opposite, but the integral of sine of x is negative cosine of x, and the integral for cosine of x is simply sine of x. And the last two that I'll fit on this list for right now are the, the, the indefinite integral of one over the square root of one minus x squared. That was the sine inverse of x, right? When we differentiate the sine inverse of x, we get that. So this is the sine inverse of x. And in this case right here, the, the integral of one over one plus x squared is the tangent inverse. And again, I want to emphasize that whenever we find the indefinite integral or the general antiderivative, we always get this arbitrary constant that we add on here. And I want to emphasize that right now for all of these. These are all true as long as I put this plus C on the end. All right, let's just do a couple examples to make sure we understand what's going on right here. Here we're being asked to find the indefinite integral for two x to the fifth plus one over x. First and foremost, I can use the sum and different rules for integration to split this up into two different integrals. And then also, so here I am separating this. Then also I know that I can take this constant of two and move it outside this integral right here. And now I can integrate both of these using these rules over here. 
In this term right here, this integral, I'd be using this anti-power rule. So what I get is x to the sixth over six. I am multiplying that by this two out front here. Then here, this one over x is the natural log of x, or the natural log of the absolute value of x. And then when I'm done integrating, I always got to add this plus c. Cleaning things up here, I would get a one-third x to the sixth plus the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c, giving me my indefinite integral for this original expression. In the second example, I'm being asked to find the indefinite integral for 2 over 1 plus x squared. Now, you might be thinking that you could do some tricks like applying the power rule here or something like that, but we actually can't. There's going to be a whole set of rules for integration like there were for differentiation, right? In some cases with operations in differentiation like addition and subtraction, you could just differentiate around those. But when it came to products or quotients, we had more complicated structures. Luckily, in this one, we actually can just use one of our more rare integrals. In this case, what I'm first going to do is move this, this constant of 2 out in front of the integral. Now, to integrate this, I'm actually going to use this property right here. This is the derivative right here of the tangent inverse function. And so this actually becomes 2 times the tangent inverse of x plus c. So in this video, we introduce this notation here for the indefinite integral, which is also the antiderivative. We actually went through a few rules for indefinite integrals. It's not a complete list. This isn't a complete list of the stuff that we've seen in Calc 1. Again, everything, every derivative we learned in Calc 1 can also be covered in this list. Uh, for instance, I haven't done all the trig fun functions or the trig inverse functions. What we can always do, as previously discussed, is if we want to, we can take the derivative of our solution for an indefinite integral or an antiderivative, and if that derivative results in the original expression, then we have done the job we've been asked to do.